this is Woodside Church Youth. Hi youth group, uh, you might not know me but my name is Jamie Pearson, I'm part of Woodside Church, I lead Devoted and um, I'm a worship leader at Woodside. And I'm just going to spend a few moments talking to you um, from our new series called What the Gospel Means for Me right now. And the section that I'm going to be talking about is going to be on perspective. An example of personal perspective might be that if I describe to you a beautiful golden beach with um, you know, warm rays of sunshine and, and sea just lapping up against it and um, you, know, you can hear the birds, well... That sounds like just like paradise to most people. But from the perspective of a fish, a fish's personal perspective, a beach is not where it wants to be at all. A beach is an arid desert with no air, you can't breathe, you're going to dry up and die. And so those two perspectives, although they've described the same reality, they, they are actually um, two different uh, opposing forces describing the same thing. And perspective isn't just physical. It can also be a lot to do with um, how you perceive the world around you and, and that, those can be altered dramatically from person to person depending on your stage of life or, or your, your background, how you were brought up um, and your experiences um, and, and, and those, those sorts of things can vary dramatically from person to person. And I don't know about you but I actually found this whole experience quite overwhelming. It's, it, these recent few weeks with the news changing all the time, it's a lot of change, lots of people are losing their jobs, I've been furloughed which means I'm not working properly at the moment and there's lots of insecurity in the air, there's been lots of tragedy, the news has been completely tragic and um, it's just an awful lot when you think about it and it is quite overwhelming. And that is just one of the ways in which my perspective has been just dramatically changed since the start of the new year, it's, it's like a different world. But what does the Bible say about perspective and about how we can deal when, with, with a difficult perspective like this? When we are stuck and trapped, um, feeling claustrophobic or overwhelmed by the events of our daily lives. Matthew 6 verse 25 to 27 says this. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So what you take away from that is, Right at the beginning, um, Jesus just tells you right out, do not worry. And he's not saying try not to worry or try to think positive thoughts or, or things like this. He's just saying, don't worry. Stop worrying. So you might go, oh, but there's this and there's that. It's all overwhelming. What's the future going to be? Well, he says, stop. Don't worry. Just don't worry. And, and how can you do that? How can you not worry? And so that's when he uses the example of the birds. I don't know if, you, if you've ever sat and watched birds. I've got little birds, little sparrows that always come around my house and they always sit outside the window. And birds are, birds are really busy. They are hopping about all the time. They're moving on with their lives. They don't sit still, but they're not worried. See, what, they, what birds do is they live in the moment. Like it says, they don't, they don't sow or reap or store away in barns. It means they don't plan for a far off future they don't have a plan b where they're stressed about what is the future going to bring and yet every day they're out and they find food they're provided for and god says if i'm going to provide for them how much more am i going to provide for you so that's one of the ways in which we can actually um, uh, live our life we can think okay well i'm provided for today i have food for today i have clothes for today i have a roof over my head for today Life is a, is a journey, it's, it's like going across a hike across the mountains and, and there are 
steep bits where you've got to push hard and there's downhill bits where it's nice and easy but um it's a long journey and worrying is a little bit like carrying an extra weight if you imagine your worries it's like having a bag on your back and every extra worry you are just stuffing it full so whatever your worries might be you might be worried um am i going to be able to get married in the future you're stuffing that in your bag you might be thinking uh, what is my job going to be? What what are my exam results? You're stuffing that in your bag. You might be thinking uh, about COVID-19 and all the terrible events in the news. When are they going to end? When are things going to look positive again? Well, you're stuffing all of that in your bag. And by the end of it, you have a bag that is chocked full of worries. And so the problem is you've got to carry that now because you're about to go on your journey and you're going to have this huge bag on your back. And what God says is, I don't want you to carry these worries with you. Matthew 11 verse 28 says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What God is saying is, don't carry a big bag full of worries. Pass them off to me. He's saying, let me carry your worries for you. I will worry about your tomorrow. You just practice living for today. You worry about what's in front of you. You get yourself fed. You don't sit statically. You act like a bird. A bird doesn't just sit and wait with its mouth open, waiting for God to just poke food in there. You actively get on with your day. But God is telling us not to worry about our futures. But how can we not worry about our future? Does the future not matter? Like, how can you just ignore everything that's going on and just and just be okay with it and just move on? Well, God isn't asking us to do that. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 to 18 say, For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So don't look at the troubles we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things that we cannot see will last forever. God isn't saying that your worries don't matter and just to ignore them. The, 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 the point is, your perspective is, if you're worried about what is happening right now, you're not looking at the bigger picture. And what is the bigger picture? God's heavenly perspective is, this will end. That this is small in the huge scope of God's plan. Uh, there are loads of troubles that I've had in my, in my life loads of really like consuming troubles that I worried about for hours and hours that I can't even really remember now. I've almost forgotten them because they were so long ago and they're so not related to the life that I have now. They're just worries that don't exist anymore. And when we have a bigger perspective, a perspective that realises that these things will eventually pass, it allows us to let go of them and to hand them over to God. And and we have to put into perspective that we are actually eternal beings. Because everything on this earth is finite and God made it that way. Our bodies are finite and they will get ill and die off. Um, this whole world is finite. Every sort of building on the earth will eventually crumble down to dust. It won't be here It's just a matter of time for how long before it isn't here anymore. And so the reality is we can't hold on to these troubles that we have in our present day when we have a perspective that is much larger and it goes on into eternity. So God is saying, hand your worries, your daily worries over to me and I will sort them out for you. And I want you to have a perspective that is the same as mine, that it goes on into eternity, that we think one day there is going to be peace. One day there is going to be justice. One day all the hurt and the harm on this earth will come to an end and there will be a new heaven and earth. There's a little story that Abraham Lincoln used to tell. Obviously, it's not from the Bible, but I still think it's, it's, a, it's a nice little analogy. So he used to say this, he said, a king once asked his wise men to invent him a sentence he could display that would be true and appropriate in all times and situations. He said they went away and they came back and they presented him with the words, 
and this too shall pass away. When we have God's perspective, our worries shrink. They become smaller. Because we know God will provide for us. We know he'll do good for us. The Bible says God works all things for our good. So we can pass our worries off to God. We can hold on to the truth that one day all of this will come to pass. And we can look to the hope that God's kingdom on earth will come, which will mean peace and happiness and justice for all. And we can we can hold on to that truth. That is something that we can hold on to as a promise. There are a few practical things that you can do to take away to live this heavenly perspective and to live it in a daily in your daily life. And uh, one of the things that you can do is to live a life of thankful prayer. Even in tough times, even in the toughest of times, there are still little small things that you can be thankful for. You could say, thank you, I still have my health. Thank you, I have a mum and dad who love me. Thank you, I have food in my belly and a roof over my head. And those small things can actually help you to appreciate that God is here looking after your day, your daily needs, while he handles your worries for the future. But the other thing that we can do is try to live with a mindset that is bigger than our daily experience. We can live with the knowledge that peace will come, that justice will be done, and that we can know that his kingdom on earth at the end of the day will come. And that whatever whatever worries we have, whatever things are causing us harm today, they shall eventually pass. Okay, so I just want to finish this um, by just praying for us. So why don't you just join me in saying a prayer. Lord, we just want to pray that you would help us to live up a godly perspective in our daily life, that you would help us to hand off our worries to you and to live a life of thankfulness and gratefulness that we are living for the moment, for the day. We pray, would you just help us to unburden ourselves of all our worries, of all the things that cause us stress. We just pray, like your Bible says, who could add one day to their life by worrying no one can so we just pray lord we want to give over our worries to you and just ask you for your peace to enter our life thank you woodside youth hope you found that talk helpful and i hope we get to see you all soon